Hey everyone, in today's video I am doing a DIY in which I'm going to show you how I made these crystal quartz headbands and they're actually inspired by three different sources and I thought it might be fun to take a minute and tell you what those were. Recently I've seen a lot of crystal quartz jewelry and hair accessories on Pinterest and I've always thought it's such a cool material and it looks so neat. I wanted to try something out so this was kind of perfect. Secondly, I've always really loved Tilda Swinton's character or her costume in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think it's amazing, especially that icicle crown. And then thirdly, and this is just coincidental, my favorite band or one of them, Empire of the Sun, is coming to New York City in a few months and the singer Luke Steele is really, really eccentric. He always has fantastic costumes, makeup, and he always has some sort of crazy crown. So I've kind of drawn inspiration for this project in three different places and I'm going to stop talking and just show you how I did this and hopefully you'll like my video. For this project, you'll obviously need some crystal quartz beads. I chose a purple and a clear iridescent with a pink reflection. I'll link to the Amazon listing they came from because they were on sale and they were even better in person than in the ad. You'll also need a set of nylon jaw pliers, chain nose pliers, and wire cutters. I'm using a silver tone craft wire in 20 gauge, and optional items include a measuring tape and a pair of scissors. But you're definitely going to need some plain headbands. These are by Scunchy, and it's the silver ones that I'll be working with. I also have three sets of medium and small glass beads in ivory, pink, and cornflower blue. I began my project by doing the obvious, opening up my packs of headbands. These came from a local drugstore, but if you don't see anything like them in your own neighborhood shop, try checking out an art store or even Etsy. They're not especially hard to come by. My headbands measured 15 inches long, so I decided that I was only going to cover 10 inches from the center outwards. This meant that I'd have 2.5 inches along either end that I'd leave open. And because this is quartz, they're not all going to be identical or even the same size, so here I'm lining them up with the largest in the center and the smaller ones tapering out. I'm also cutting open my medium white and pink glass pearls so that they'll be that much more accessible during the project. Using the nylon jaw pliers to straighten out some of the wire, I unspooled about 40 inches and then folded it in half so that I'd have 20 on either side. There's a lot of wire wrapping and looping coming up and it sucks up a ton of length, hence the need for such a large amount of material. You want to start by placing the bend in the wire right in the center of the headband and then of course you'll need to wind each side around it at least once. This is just a really easy way to anchor it all on. If you need to, use your chain nose pliers to tighten it up if it feels a little loose or to push the loops together if they weren't wound around closely enough. Now each side of the wire is its own separate entity in terms of how I'm adding things on. I'm on the right at the beginning of this demo, and you can see that right now I've strung on my first bit of quartz. The bead opening is almost in the middle of the stone, so I kind of had to wriggle it around and manipulate the whole thing so that it's facing upwards and in the right direction. The wire then gets wrapped around the base of the stone, helping to further brace it, before it's brought around the headband in another loop, which will essentially just lock it into place. And then, this was just for the sake of being more decorative, I strung on a pink bead before rolling the wire around the headband again. Actually, I did the looping twice after the round beads because I thought the wire itself looked kind of cool and it definitely maintained a sense of space between the quartz. Then it was just a matter of repeating the steps. I'd string on a quartz, move and bend it into the position that I wanted before wrapping the wire around the base of the stone once and then I'd use the end of that wire to make the loop around the headband itself. I also continued to interchange with the pink pearls. When I'd used up the quota of stones that I'd laid out in advance for that right side, I knew I'd finished, at least with that one half. So to polish it off, I just bent whatever wire was left around the end of the headband. And then of course I went on to do the other side. Here's what it ended up looking like, and here's another one that I made with the blue glass pearls. In this version, I'm using my purple quartz, but I'm not working with any beads in between. It's still the same steps, it just doesn't involve any extras. I think it gives the whole thing a different look altogether. Now there's lots of ways to style these into your hair, but I'm just going to show you a few. These are definitely a bit rough, but I think they'll give you an idea of what's possible. In this first version, I started by curling all my hair with a 3 4 of an inch tapered wand. I'm not going to brush them out either, instead I'm just leaving it as it is and putting in my two clear quartz headbands. In this second version, I began by carving out two horizontal panels at the front of my face. The hair on the back gets pulled up and twisted into a loose knot, which I secured with a few pins. Once that portion was in place, I put on all three headbands and used the hair at my face to hide the sides of the crown. The curl sucked up a lot of my length, so I didn't really even have enough left over to wrap around the bun. I kind of just pinned them loosely to the top of my head, and with that, this look was complete. 
For the third style, I carved out the same two panels at the front, only this time I made those sections slightly wider. Moving forward, I gently teased my crown in the back before pinning it into a half bump. Once again, I placed all three crowns onto my head. The only true variation in this version is that I used the hair around my face differently. I decided to take a page from the witch in Narnia. Her crown looks like it's just emerging straight out of her head. I'm not 100% sure I pulled off this illusion, but I tried. Anything left over was just pinned back over the bump, and with that, this one was finished. In the very last example, I teased the crown but didn't pin anything back. I also used a comb to lightly push up and rough up my curls. This is actually my favorite of the four, but I'd be interested to hear which you liked best. Anyway, thanks for watching my video today. As always, my social media links will all be in the underbar below. And until next time, have fun and keep braiding. Bye!